Welcome everyone, in this video we'll be learning about the mind-blowing uses of smart objects. First up we're going to look at how smart objects can retain image quality. So let's take at these two bird images we have here. Currently they are both rasterized flat images. If I zoom in you can see they're both sharp and high quality. We're going to convert the one on the right to a smart object. And to do that you come to the layer, right click and select convert to smart object. And I'm just going to change the name of that to smart object as well for the purpose of this tutorial. Now I'll select both of those by clicking the top one, holding down shift and clicking the bottom one. Then I'm going to hit command T for transform and just scale those right down very small. Now if you just click each individual layer, starting with the rasterized layer, hit command T, you'll see that the width and height is both at 100%. But if we come to the smart object and hit command T, it's only about 6% of its original size, which means it's held onto the memory of its original size also. So now, if we come and select both of those layers again and scale them back up, again, Command T to transform, and I'm holding Option Shift to scale those in proportion. You can see the one on the left, the rasterized image, has lost a lot of its original quality, whereas the smart object on the right has retained it. So this is really useful in designs. If you're like me and you like to play around with size a lot, it just gives you peace of mind that you're not gonna lose image quality. So that brings us on to keeping images editable. So let's take the same image. Say I want to remove the background and replace it with something else. Now a quick and dirty way of doing this is to come to select and subject. And this is really good at just masking out the main subject of an image. You can see it's not perfect, but you can come in and just use a brush to reveal or mask out any bits that it's got wrong. And you can just do that by clicking on the mask in the layers panel, then using a white brush to reveal and a black brush to hide which has got nothing to the smart objects, but it's a great way of hiding elements without actually deleting any of the original image. Now I'm gonna place in the image I want on the layer underneath the bird, scale that to the size that I want. And let's say I want to create a blur on this to make the background kind of out of focus. I'll come to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just turn that up. Hit okay. Now I think that's far too blurry. Because this image is not a smart object, now I wanna come and try to edit that again by coming back to blur. There's not much I can do about it, because like the size, a rasterized image does not retain any memory from its original image. So I'm going to hit Command Z a few times to go back to my original image, and again I'll come and convert that to a smart object by right clicking the layer and clicking smart object. And you can see that it's a smart object now by this little icon that's on the thumbnail. Now if I come blur that, and hit OK, you can see that's added a smart filter in the layers panel. Now if I come double click that, I can easily edit the blur further. And this works with all kinds of filters and effects. A second benefit to having this as a smart object is that if I double click it in the layers panel, it will open up the original photograph separately. If I want to edit that separately, I can. But you do need to save that image back to its original form. So if it's a flat JPEG, you need to flatten that before you save. And as you can see, that carries across to the image you've already edited. Now a great benefit to this is if you come to Window Arrange, and hit two up vertical. You can then make edits to the smart object. And when you hit save, you can see those edits take place in the composition. And next up, you'll see how smart objects can get really useful. And that is by unlocking flexible transform tools. Now let's take this billboard. There are a lot of billboard mockups you can download online that already have smart objects linked, but in this case, we don't. So I'm just gonna draw a flat rectangle roughly the size that I think the billboard should be. I'll then right click the layout, convert that to a smart object. Now I'm gonna hit Command T for transform, bring the width of that in a little bit, and then I'll right click and select distort, and use the handles to adapt that to the size of the billboard image. Now, if I double click that layer, that will open up the original flat rectangle as a separate file. And whatever I put in here is gonna automatically adapt to that smart object I've just created, retaining all the edits I've just made with the transform tool. Now, this isn't the most eye-catching billboard, so here's one I made earlier. Now, I've created this in Adobe Illustrator, and I've already edited it to the size of that original rectangle I created. So I'm gonna paste that into my smart object, ensuring that I also keep this as a smart object. And you'll see why in a minute. So again, hit Command S to save that, and that's now mapped to our billboard mockup nicely. Now something great about smart objects is that they link between different programs. So I can still edit that original Illustrator file and it will update in here. 
So if I double click our smart object again, or just select it in the top, if I still have it open, then I'm going to double click the smart object I pasted in from Illustrator. And there, if I want to say change the fill color of all these pink elements to a green, I can select one element, come to select same fill color, and then change the color of all of them. Now I'll just hit Command S to save. And that's updated in our Photoshop smart object. So I'll save again and that updates in our mock-up. So you can create through smart objects a chain of files that all link up to each other, keeping things super editable and you won't end up having to redo any edits that you've already made in the Photoshop file. Now, there are two types of smart objects. There's smart objects and linked smart objects. So to illustrate the difference, I've got this example. Now when I create a packaging design for a client, I like to visualize the different finishes in Photoshop. So any embosses or varnishes, I'll add using effects such as bevel and emboss and gradient overlays. But if the client then asks for changes to the design, I might have to come and redo all of those edits. And this is where linked smart objects are fantastic. So I'm just gonna turn that layer off and come to file, place linked, and I'll select my Illustrator file and place that in, keeping it as a smart object. And I'll scale that to the right size, drag my effects up by holding option, and then clicking and dragging the effects. If I double click that, it's gonna open up the original Illustrator file, where I can make any edits or change colors, which will then update in the Photoshop file. Now I've saved that. Now if I come to find out and look at my file, you can see that that has in fact saved over the original file. And if I come back to Photoshop, that has in fact updated. And again, because it's smart object, those effects I applied earlier are still completely editable. I can change them, I can turn them off and on. And this is just really handy to build into your work process with regards to keeping things editable and saving you a lot of time in the long run. Another great use for this is if you're working with a very complex file and it's slowing down your computer a lot, you can save individual elements as separate PSD files and place them all in as linked smart objects, which can make the whole editing process much smoother. Next up, we're gonna talk about duplicating images. So using the same example, I'm going to create a shelf shot of this pack design. So I'm just going to duplicate those, ensuring that I have my design as a linked object, which means if I want to make any edits, like changing color, I can do that and save the file and that will update all of the duplicates in the Photoshop file, meaning I don't have to keep duplicating after every single edit. This is quite a simple example, but if you think about how complex files can get sometimes, being able to edit any duplicates all at once can save a ton of time. But what do you do if you've got multiple duplicates and you want to edit one separately? We well, just come to the smart object in the layer, right click and come to new smart objects via copy. Now if I double click that and edit it, and again hit command S, you'll see it's only edited that one. And if I come and edit one of the other two, that will edit both of them. And one quick thing that can trip people up that I haven't covered yet. So if I copy and paste a vector file from Illustrator to Photoshop and just paste that in as a smart object, if I hit Command T to transform, you'll see that perspective and distort and a lot of the other transform options are greyed out. So to get around this, you come to the layer, you right click the layer and click convert to smart object again. I don't know why this is, but it then allows you to use the other transform tools. And onto our final step, we're just gonna go over some of the obstacles of smart objects. So one thing you'll notice with smart objects is that you can't use any of your usual tools. So if you want to use a paintbrush or the burn brush, clone stamp, it's not gonna let me. Now it will always give you an option to rasterize, but rather than that, I'll just double click the smart object where it will allow you to make any edits to the original image. It's always worth keeping duplicates of your original image in case you need to come back to it if you've made any permanent changes that you don't like. And that's about it on smart objects. If you've got any other uses, feel free to drop them in the comments. But otherwise, thanks for watching today, guys. I hope you found it helpful. For more creative tips and tricks, just click through to my next video.